All right, guys. Today, I'm gonna tell y'all about my uh, how I got into object shows. This was on a community poll I had, and apparently, for my 50 subscriber special, y'all wanted this. So, I got the BFB unofficial soundtrack by Total Autocracy. Feel free to subscribe to them for this wonderful soundtrack for us. All right. So, today, we are talking about how I got into object shows. This is probably going to be a really long video, so... Just so you know, this wasn't all that... I didn't get to object shows until I was a teenager, y'all. Yeah, I know. I think that's insane, too. How I've been on YouTube for, like, my whole life. Like, I would always watch YouTube, always dream about being a YouTuber. Which, I mostly do these videos for fun, not for money. You know, the classic YouTube stuff. I'm, I'm trying to be more classic than what YouTube is now. Because... What YouTube is now isn't what it used to be, in my opinion. And our music is messing up. Okay. We're just going to start over. Anyway, the great part about this was that it wasn't me who found it it was my friend yeah they're gonna go by anonymous and i'm not gonna tell their gender or anything because i forgot to ask if they wanted to like what they wanted to go by or anything so i'm just gonna constantly say they and not their name at all if I accidentally say your name, I'm sorry. And, but just be glad I didn't say your last name. Anyway, what it is, is that I, I had this friend in like high school. I was a freshman in high school. Yes, high school, I know. And I really kept on trying to, like, think of things that we could talk about. Because when I was in school, we didn't really have anything to talk about. We just talked about our past. That's all we did, pretty much. We couldn't really think of really stuff that we talk about. And I would always talk about something crazy I would find online or something. Then they decide to show me this show called Inanimate and Sandy 2. Now they knew my family didn't like swearing. So she didn't show me the first season. Until I decided to watch it online. And I watched it. And she showed me episode 12. Because she said that was the best episode. Now this was around the time... Before episode 14 came out. So the newest episode. Was on episode 13. And it was on hiatus. So. We couldn't really do that. So. 
we were constantly speculating what was inside the egg and stuff like that. Remember those days when you were wondering what was inside that egg and then all it is is just a creature. Like, that's just what the OC is. I'm just saying, that's just what the OC is. But after that, we get done. Oh, she showed me episode 12. Lunch was over. I only had her for lunch. Oh, shoot. Anyway. Sorry, I said your gender. Sorry. Um, I'm really sorry, but I won't say your name. I promise. I'll try my best. So, then we get done with that. And she sent me the playlist. So... After that, she sent me the playlist, and I watched the rest of the first, second season. And I watched it, and I really loved it. I was like, man, this is reminding me of my childhood when I used to watch troll drama and stuff. Like, it brought me back to it. Now, back when I was a kid, I wasn't the biggest Total Drama fan. Mostly because I didn't understand it. I didn't understand why there was a challenge or why they were battling for this. But when I saw this as a teen, I kind of understood it. For once, I understood the purpose of all. So... Then I got to it, and then I saw the whole season, and I was just mesmerized by it. She, she told me to wait on episode thirteen because she wanted to show me her it herself. So she showed me the thirteenth episode, and I loved it. Although, I do agree that episode 12 is the best episode, in my opinion. So, if you're asking me about that, yeah, episode 12 is my favorite episode of the second season. And yes, I hope either Knife or Lightbolt win. Anyway... Then we got to, then I was like, oh, okay, I, I guess we just wait till the next episode, and whenever that is, I didn't really think too much about it, because it said 2018, and this was around like, it was almost 2019, so, and this was at the beginning of the school year, so, it was around September, Sorry if I got that wrong. I, my memory ain't too good with that. But after that, she showed me BFB. Now, I one of the greatest things about season two of II, I really loved the the animation. When we got to BFB, I hated it. Now, now, I really love it. But when I first saw it, I thought the animation was horrendous. The voice acting was terrible. Most of the voices didn't sound right. I thought it was the dumbest thing. I didn't understand it. In episode 12 was the newest episode and it was on hiatus so when i got to episode 12 i was like i don't care about this series yeah i know a lot of y'all see my videos on bfdi more than inanimate and sandy but i prefer inanimate and sandy more but i was so mad at them I was so mad that 
they would even think of making this. But after we were done with BFB, I was like, okay, she better not show me any more of it. Until... She showed me BFDI. But... What about that? What's so great about that? Well, I loved it. I thought it was funny. The animation was okay. Was I, I levels are good. But I thought the animation and everything actually was pretty good for the most part. And the voice acting did pretty good for, you know, for them being little. Then I got to BFDIA. I loved it even more. Yes, I'm a BFDIA lover. I thought the animation was 10 times better than the first one. 10 times better than BFB. That's my favorite. But when I found out it got canceled, I was so upset. I was like, why did they keep BFD, BFB keep going? Not BFDIA. I know the story now, but back then I didn't know. Then we got to IEFB. Now, IEFB is my personal favorite season. It's her personal favorite season. And we both really love IDFB. I'm still a little upset that they decided to make BFDIA 6 and not IDFB 2. But, oh well, at least I got one of my seasons back. As BFB 13 came around, I really didn't watch it when I first saw it. She sent me the video, said it was there and everything. I just didn't care. I literally watched it and skipped the boring and most important parts of the series. And then BFB 14 happened. I did the same exact thing. But when BFB 15 came around, oh my goodness, I found out, wait, this is the same thing that BFDI did. I thought BFDI was a different object show. Now, before I continue with BFDI, after she showed me the complete BFDI series, she showed me this uh, two other object shows that people don't really talk about that much. Now, I'm probably not going to make clips of this, of these. Now, if you don't know, I make clips of the best moments of these characters. Of Namit and Sandy, BFDI, and some other ones. Just some of my favorite characters from other shows. And I put them in a playlist for... People who really love these characters can watch their best moments without having to watch the episodes. Well, here's where it got some, somewhat crazy. I really loved Object Mayhem. My Object Mayhem was a pretty good series. If you don't know, go check it out right now. It's a pretty good show. The guy's working on a super finale, but I don't know when that's coming out. And he hasn't made any more episodes for like a year or two now. But his name's Ultra Tunes. And he he can't keep an object show running to save his life. Like he can't do that. Then we got to Object Overload because Object Mayhem wasn't loading up. I saw that. I thought it was hilarious. She only showed me like two episodes. And I watched the rest on my own. I, I really loved it. I'm so glad that 
there's a reboot happening, a second reboot. Because first reboot, probably the best episode so far. Imagine what the third reboot's going to be. Anyway, then we got to, we got done with all that. We were constantly waiting for Nets and Nana Insanity and BFB. Well, I was personally just waiting for Nana Insanity or Ajit Mayhem to finish up. Because those were the shows I cared about. I didn't care anything about BFB. I didn't care. I didn't wonder. I just really just didn't really want to know what would happen. Like... And I would mostly just watch them when I was bored. The newest episodes. But then when BFB 15 happened, I noticed a character that was in BFDIA that was my favorite character. Puffball. If you don't know, Puffball was my personal favorite in BFDIA. I thought the... Pawn twins were pretty dumb with making her just decide to sabotage her team just because they didn't want the popular character to win. Even though Rocky was the most popular character in the first season, he still didn't win, you know. But then, I really got to wondering, what if Puffball got better, and could this mean that I watched the whole series, and I just wasn't paying any attention to, you know what? I got a little curious, so I rewatched the whole ser- the whole BFB series all over again, and I saw it in a different eye. Got me thinking. Could this mean that BFDIA and BFB are pretty much the same? I got to loving it. Now, it wasn't BFDIA and IDFB levels of love, but I still loved it for what it was. And at some point, Episodes, they were even better than the BFDIA episodes, I will agree with. So then, we got to BFP 16. Once I just got ready for the series, I was hyped beyond belief that we were going to see uh, the next one. I was hearing that they were going to be a debut. I was wondering who was going to go up for debut. Was it going to finally be Nazisti? Was Evil Leafy going to do? Big Evil Leafy lover, by the way. And turned out that they split the show. And I was like, what? What's going on? But then I realized, oh, they're splitting the show because they were wanting to do that from the beginning. I got more love from that. While I was waiting for BFB to start up, I wondered what my friend was thinking about if she was more uh, more excited for Teapot, BFB, she of course went with Teapot, because she loves, like, story-driven stuff, and character development, that was the whole point why she loved BFB so much, and Inanimate and Sandy too, it went beyond than just, you know what, so then, and Anime and Sandy 14 happened. I bawled during that. It was something else if you were there on that day as an OSC fan 
watching that episode. I don't know how to explain it, but it was something amazing. Like, it's hard to explain it, but you actually felt what the characters were feeling at the bright moments. Now, I still love the of 12th episode, but the best story-driven one was the 14th episode. And just that ending of that episode was so perfect. Him saying, there are four, uh, and then there were four who are really going for it. We are back with Anamit and Sandy 2. Or something like that. I really loved it very much. And I really appreciate what Adam did with the series. After all that, I was very wondering, when was 15 going to come out? I was constantly asking my friend, did we get any news for the 15th episode of The Name is Andy? As BFB was going around and everything, I just started liking it, but it wasn't really that good as first, as the original BFB. Although, I do understand that it was what it was supposed to be. Nothing extraordinary, but something special. As my enjoyment went on, I started getting more invested in what Nana and Sandy was going to do. As Object Mayhem started to make in Season 2, I got really excited for it. I really wanted to see what would happen. But as it got cancelled on its third episode, and that episode had my favorite character in it, Gun, I really got upset with it. I was like, how could they make an episode and not finish it? Why would they publish something unfinished? Does that make Season 2 and Season 1 non-canon now? I really got upset with them for doing that. Then object, well, then the third season happened. Catch out Part 2 if you really want to know what happened next.